What's up squad? It's Brandon from the band Tucson. Thanks again for joining us. So today I want to talk about NATO and specifically the composition of NATO members and why this is very concerning to me. So we all know that NATO started off as the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, alliance of a few Western nations, uh, primarily uh, France, UK, bringing on board uh, the United States. And they kind of formed this alliance with uh, a couple of other junior members, but we, they formed this military alliance in defense of Soviet aggression going eastward to westward, as well as the, the old saying set goes, uh, keep America in, keep Germany down and keep the Soviets out. So there's this whole concept of this this mutual defense alliance pack of Western Europe uh, for hemispheric uh, defense means. Now, subsequently, what has happened is NATO has expanded significantly eastward. And I find this very interesting because it is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And one thing that has caught my eye is the memberships that have been put out in the media as potential opportunities. And the most recent round, especially with this war in Ukraine, was Sweden, Finland, and Ukraine. And I can't help but notice the commonality of homogenous population amongst these three different nations, uh, primarily the, the blonde hair, blue eye uh, physical trait that is in all three countries that they have in common. So... I think I find it concerning because what you're doing is you're really building uh, this, this big alliance, this Eurocentric alliance, uh, the most powerful military alliance in the world. So when you look at Russia, so let's say Ukraine wins. So what do you think is going to happen to Russia? Uh, NATO is going to be to the, in the north, in the Baltic, it's going to be in Central Europe to its western regions. And now it's going to be curving under its, its southern regions where you have Ukraine. And of course, it's going to lead over into the Caucasus, right? So you kind of have Russia encapsulated. And I wonder if this really sets us up for the 21st century um, military standoff. So we see the world as three poles, uh, the West primarily centered on the United States but also India and China. So India and China are massive populations, but their resources uh, alone in their own country do not sustain them. So go for major oil importers, for example. And if Russia was defeated and there was regime change and they was to fall into a NATO alliance, you would have a serious issue um, with this, this new alliance because it will be so powerful. We're talking about a grand alliance from Vancouver to Vladivostok. Uh, the Arctic Ocean, it will be pretty much NATO's pond. And it will be four out of the top five or four out of five UN Security Council members. 94% of the global nuclear arsenal weapons will be within this NATO alliance with Russia was to join. You're talking five out of the top 10 global economies, as well as you're looking at the three largest countries in the world with Russia, Canada, the United States, extremely resource rich countries. So when you put all these things together, it really is a concerning factor because the scale of European supremacy of this alliance, it will pretty much make Napoleon whimper and Hitler blush. Like the power that an alliance of current NATO members plus bringing on Ukraine, Finland, Sweden, and acquisition of Russia is going to really set the world up in a, in a very polar way based off of pretty much uh, European-centric uh, supremacy. And I find it to be unacceptable at this day and age. And I think that NATO should go back to its roots, hemispheric defense. I do think it's a place in this world, a vital role that NATO plays in this world. But I, I think they should open up their membership, look towards the diversification. They do have two Islamic members uh, in Albania and Turkey. And you see the country that's putting up the most fight on Finland and Sweden joining at this moment is Turkey, just to have that dissenting opinion and to see things from a different lens. 
like this other country that I think would be great uh, participants if they were to join in NATO, such as Morocco or uh, Sierra Leone and Liberia. Uh, Africa has its fair share of defense uh, challenges, especially in the modern day. But I think the current trajectory of NATO, not even that they're seeing this, but the current trajectory of NATO and the capacity they are building with the mindset that it will create can lead to a very, very dark, dark future for NATO ahead. So let us know your thoughts. Do you think we were on base with this, like identifying this potential risk in this grand military alliance? Or do you think we're off base and we're just attributing too much of uh, the domino effect to something that's relatively nuanced? But that would be really hard to say because the insidious drive of NATO expanding eastward, you have to wonder what's the end goal. And if they're not able, if the West currently is not able to stand up to a, a fully empowered China or fully empowered India, which they are in their way, these, these countries are growing crazy and they have massive energetic and industrious population. You have to wonder if NATO is looking to Russia to get this resource hedge so that they can better bargain with these future giants. But also with that hedge will come this capacity and a Eurocentric mindset with the most powerful countries on the planet. So let us know your thoughts. If you like the content, please like, share, subscribe, uh, comment down below. Also check out our, our global products we have on Amazon as well as our global university apps. We learn about countries, flags, cities, capitals, etc. So thanks for joining once again. Till next time, take care. Fan to up.